Hello, I'm A.R. Bernard, and welcome to today's program. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we'll hear the story of a former DJ, breakdancer, and drug addict whose life has been transformed and is now a minister who's looking to help transform the lives of others. Just ahead on A.R. Bernard, the spirit is alive at this hip-hop church in the hood. In her former life, Lady Jam was a radio DJ, music and breakdance performer, and drug addict. But since her life's been turned over to God, Reverend LaDonna Clark is a preacher whose testimony has been transformed from mess to message. Last summer, Reverend Clark opened the doors to a contemporary praise and worship service in Plainfield, New Jersey. And as Cheryl Washington reports, it delivers new spiritual meaning to Church in the Hood. Grace Episcopal Church in Plainfield, New Jersey was never more awake than on this particular Friday night. Parishioners of various walks of life and faith came together for a holy hookup. But unlike the typical sacredness of Sunday service, this was more like crazy off the chain. With dancing in the aisles and praying in the pews, the power of praise rocked the first hip-hop church in the hood. Led by the dynamic Reverend LaDonna Clark, the alternative worship combines rap, dance, scripture, and spirit. It's what Reverend Clark had adopted in her 22-year career of pastoring on the stage, streets, and in the projects of Atlanta. Yeah, church in the hood, baby. Hip-hop for life. You know that's right. We're going to keep it tight right here in God's house, doing it, doing it for God like a rock star. You know what I'm saying? Party yeah. like a rock star. Yeah, <laughs> for God. Party like a rock star. Party like a rock star. But it's all for God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what do you still go by, Lady Jam, or is it now Reverend Super Rock Star? <laughs> <laughs> well, recently it's become that, but um, no, it's uh, Reverend LaDonna Clark, and a.k.a. Lady Jam, and actually the jam stands for Jesus Anointed Me. Reverend Clark's conversion as a former radio personality and performer to ordained minister has reached an audience of old and young believers through her pop culture spiritual style. By allowing them to express themselves and how they feel about God in the way that they know how to do it. If it's rap, if it's poetry, if it's singing, if it's dancing, if it's speaking, you know, we want to give them the forum. We want to give them a stage. We want to give them the opportunity to express their love for Jesus, their love for God, and what God has done for them in their own way. 22 years ago, Reverend Clark was in a nightclub about to perform on stage when all of a sudden she had a life-changing experience. She went from a secular world of substance abuse to a spiritual one of purpose. I was um, at a club one night and the Holy Spirit showed up and hooked me up with the holy hookup. I was in my dressing room getting ready to perform for 200 people and, and, and the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came to me like the Spirit of the Lord came to Samuel and called Samuel in the Bible, three, called his name three times, called my name three times and whatnot. Of course, I was in there by myself for the first time. I thought I was tripping. The, sec time, the second time I started checking the closets and the third time I knew that I should be still and know that there was something greater than myself going on. But grace, courage, and spiritual rehabilitation enabled Reverend Clark to discard the venom which ravaged her body and soul, thus allowing a personal conviction to save lives from self-destruction and turmoil. Believe you me, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what the Lord is doing and what the Lord is going to do through this ministry. I'm excited. And, and our community partners, we're trying to get people to get, come together that wouldn't normally come together and worship God. We're trying to get um, community resources and community organizations to work together like never before. That's why we do the Church in the Hood after party. So everybody can meet and greet and network and talk to each other and be amongst one another in fellowship. Joining me now is our correspondent, Cheryl Washington. Cheryl, why did Reverend Clark find the need for this type of ministry? I think ideally because she knows the background that she came from, which was quite a struggle, we must admit. And when she was a broadcaster as a radio personality in the area of the southern region of our country, 
there were people who she felt that she needed to rehabilitate, if you will, and she ended up trying to reach them through music. She's a rapper, she's a break dancer, she's kind of a, an all-around gal, if you will. Um, and the thing is, she felt that if she can do this in Atlanta, then she can easily transform this to an area like Plainfield, New Jersey, which is an urban environment. And she was able to do that rather successfully. As you saw in the piece, and this was done in the heat of summer, and it was so hot in there, and you can see people fanning themselves. But more than that, the power of the message, the power of what she was trying to get across to everyone in that edifice was exactly what she tried to do when she was in Atlanta and succeeded. And I think what people are trying to find out right now is, where can I get a message that's going to relate to me with that kind of positivity? And that's what she's been able to, to transcend to all these folks who were in the midst that day. And I think that she's doing a pretty remarkable job. She's also, interestingly enough, as if she didn't have just one job. <laughs> she's got multiple jobs. She's also an auxiliary police officer in the community. So she does a lot of community activism. So she's able to galvanize the forces, not just in Plainfield, but in surrounding areas to come forward and to kind of represent, if you will, and see whether or not they can get this abundance of energy and spirituality. Now, I think walking into that church, mm -hmm. for me or for traditional church mm -hmm. thinking folks. Yes. It's going to be quite a culture shock. A shock, right? I, I, who is she drawing? Is she drawing a cross section or just a particular segment of the population? Interestingly enough, it is a cross section because we saw people of different denominations who were there. We saw young people, but in addition to that, we saw older people who were perhaps of the Catholicism background or the Episcopalian background. And what they said to me both on camera and off camera, is that they recognize that there's only one God and it doesn't matter how you worship and how you serve him. And what they liked about it was there was an energy about it. There was a spirit about it. It wasn't the staid, boring, typical kind of ho-hum uh, service that we can, we can see in certain um, worship experiences. But in this situation, you're talking about rap, you're talking about spoken word, you're talking about dance, you're talking about songs that don't necessarily um, come to the fore of a church. All the kinds of things that she's trying to bring to one focal point and people were vis visibly touched by it and it was a visualization of things that you can see that folks were crying, folks were tapping their feet, folks were being transformed if you will and it was an amazing, amazing thing to witness and we just sat there in utter awe and utter amazement. I do believe that she has got a talent that is able to get these folks in one fell swoop to be able to understand what her mission is. And her mission ideally comes from her background. Now I can she, understand what she's trying to mm -hmm. accomplish. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, struggling to embrace the platform mm -hmm. of a church service. I can understand bringing you know, a hip-hop artist in who is converted to Christ, share their testimony, do songs, but to have the entire service, and I know she's not right. the only hip-hop church in, right, in, in the right. country. Right, she's not. How do the other churches and pastors uh, uh, react or respond well, I must to what say, she's doing? Well, I must say, and that's cut you off, Pastor, I'm sorry. I must say that she goes from church to church. It's not as though it's always in the same venue every single week or every single month. She's really taking her mission of this church in the hood concept to different areas. And the other churches are embracing it. it. What they're allowing her to do is perhaps once a week, maybe on a Friday night, which is where we spotted her on this one particular evening. It's not a Sunday service. I don't okay, want to okay. give that misimpression. Yeah. It is really based on the fact that you may come in on a Friday night or a Thursday evening, for example, or a Saturday afternoon, for example, and get your praise and worship on in a different kind of spirit. So it's not what you're seeing typically from the pulpit of, uh, of, a, of a church environment where you would expect the sacred hymns and the, the, the kind of um, uh, spirit that you would normally get there. This is a whole different ball game that she's trying to address mm -hmm. because she's mm -hmm. trying to get to the young people in particular, but not just them, as I mentioned previously, but they're the ones who need to be joined in to the spirit because they're not necessarily the ones who are being reached in the typical and traditional kind of platform. So that's really been her mission to target the young people. But at the same time, she's got a lot of older people, as you saw in the story, yeah. who are interestingly yeah. interested in the same kind of notion. See, that makes more sense to me. Yes. And especially some of our viewers who are listening to this con or watching this conversation uh, because you, you have to ask that question. But that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So she's really giving a, a an experience, a yes. worship experience yes. that's unique to her past and, 
and to what she does well, and she takes it from church to church, place to exactly, place. Exactly, exactly. It's not that much unique to her past, though, because this is something that she's already done before, oh, and okay. she's just trying to bring it to another level. In fact, what she also intends to do future-wise is to get some of the rap artists who have a clean history and a positive background and allow them to speak their own words, to speak from their own experiences to this kind of pastoring because she does feel that she has a commitment to God and a commitment to the young people who are in need of this kind of representation. So I think that she's doing a pretty dynamic job and by the way I must say parenthetically that she adores you uh -oh. <laughs> and loves your ministry. <laughs> Well, it's a blessing to see her doing yes. that. And we'll watch to see okay. how it goes. I think, I think it might fly. Okay. Thank <laughs> okay. you, Cheryl. You're welcome.